Guys, this actually might sound a little bit crazy, but what I like to do is I like to make myself a coffee and then I go out and have a walk around the neighborhood with the coffee. I actually really enjoy it. I find it super relaxing. So I'm going to go and do that now and um, I'll see you guys soon. I want to bring you guys along. I actually want to bring you guys along on my walks around the neighborhood, but I'm just going to be carrying too much things today. So I might leave that for another day. But guys, I will see you quite soon. Bye. All right. Well, I've just gotten back from my walk. It's pretty good, guys. I like doing it and I think I find it very therapeutic. So just did that, guys. And I thought, guys, given it was self-care Sunday, I thought I might just, just talk a little bit about some of the things I learned this week and trying to put into practice. So guys, t today is day 14 of daily uploads. And to the extent that I get this up tonight, it will be 14 days of consecutive uploads, which I'm pretty chuffed about if I must say so myself. To be honest, I didn't think I'd actually get this far because one of the things actually guys that I was trying to I was trying to really work on is I feel like I tend to make excuses for myself. Um, you know, if something if something was too hard, I, I would give it a go, but then I might not have seen it through because, you know, for, for this or that and so one of the big reasons why I decided to do 30 days of upload was to really try and keep myself accountable and see if I could actually um, discipline myself. For the longest time, guys, I thought, you know, motivation was something that I really lacked. But now I, I guess one thing I'm realizing, it's not necessarily motivation per se, it's, it's more so discipline. And discipline is something that you can create yourself, which is, which is, which is, which has been refreshing to learn. It's discipline that's going to help you achieve goals, whatever they may be. And motivation is nice because it gives you that spark of, you know, inspiration. But the, the, the trick with motivation, guys, is that a lot of the times it comes, I, at least for me, it comes from external rather than internal. Um, sometimes we, we get motivated because it's based on what we see, the people we interact with, maybe the art we come across. Whereas discipline is something we can really, it, it, it comes from within ourselves. So it's a lot more within our control. And it's actually, yeah, it's 100% in your own control. So discipline is what's going to help you achieve things. It's discipline that's actually going to help you, not necessarily motivation as, as I am, I'm learning. Guys, so, this is my watermelon peperomia and I was so frustrated over summer. Can you see those holes? Right in the middle. The caterpillars love this plant. That looks like a Batman sign. The caterpillars absolutely love this plant. And I was frustrated because sometimes where it ate, it would ate right in the middle of a beautiful, of a beautiful leaf. So guys, this guy, I actually should have taken a photo of when I first got him. He was struggling real bad and, you know, he looked like death. <laughs> but guys, look at him now. So what I did, guys, was I really popped him up in some new soil. And uh, I guess I had the benefit of summer because that really helped him grow a lot. He's got these, look how big his leaves are. Obviously, if I kept this guy indoors, you know, he's going to be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. He's not going to have some of these holes and, you know, being munched on by insects. But I'm just so amazed at his, at the size of his leaves. In order to treat the caterpillars, guys, you might, you might see there, I used a whole bunch of eggshells. Because eggshells, what I, what I learned from my dad is that they help keep caterpillars at bay. So I actually sprinkled a whole bunch of eggshells in there. The other thing I, uh, I heard was helpful was using liquid copper. And liquid copper, apparently what you do is you put it around your plant. And so what that does is that it really stops any, any caterpillars or pests from getting near your plants. Now, I didn't actually have to use it because I think I was just a little bit more observant around this guy whenever I would check on him a couple of days to really make sure the caterpillars is gone 
when they did go, when I did find one, I'd pick one off. And um, sorry for the dogs barking. And um, I really s spray this guy with some neem oil and soapy spray every day. I try not to use the really harsh chemicals because I find, you know, the less harsh chemicals we use, the better. But so far, he's doing all right. He's doing all right. Also, guys, this wagon wheel, you can see his older leaves suffered the same fate as my watermelon peperomia. It's just so many caterpillar bites. This guy's an extremely resilient plant. The trick is to keep him watered. You don't want to let him dry out, which I tend to do. As long as you keep him watered, and I think you can actually, you don't actually need to worry about overwatering for this guy, provided you've got a quite well draining pot. This guy likes a lot of water, so it's something I learnt, guys. It's also very a very resilient plant, so don't worry too much about underwatering or overwatering. Of course, underwatering, he's going to suffer. He's going to droop if you underwater. You can you can tell when this guy's been underwatered because he really droops. Ooh, the only real thing, guys, I'd say is worry about caterpillars. <laughs> they're the they're the pest you got to worry about. Guys, this is my Anthurium polydactum. It was a cutting that I purchased, and um, he actually came with me. He actually came to me with no roots. I guess the good thing about that, guys, is he's grown. Woo! Look at the new leaf. Woo! These guys, uh, in terms of Anthuriums, they're a little bit more hardy than your other Anthuriums. I mean, just from the fact that he was able to grow without any roots and Really, I just popped him in some well-draining orchid bark mix. He's, you know, he's survived and he's got a new leaf, which is great. The only thing I'd say, guys, is he's a bit droopy. The reason why he's a bit droopy, I reckon, is because it's been a bit cold. So I actually should bring him indoors if I want to give him the best conditions. Also, guys, if you see here, that is a, oh, I just noticed it. That is a mealybug. Now, mealybugs, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this, I'm going to take this guy off, but I'm going to spray this plant with some neem oil and I'm going to bring him indoors because mealybugs or any pests, guys, are attracted. Oops, sorry, it's not focusing. Mealy, oh, I was trying the longest to get the camera to focus on that mealybug, but it just wouldn't. So you can, it can put it to focus on my face instead. But what I was trying to say, guys, is pests tend to be attracted to plants that aren't doing so well or are feeling a little bit weak and as I was saying with this polydactum I actually reckon he's not liking the cold. A good way to prevent pests is actually giving your plants the right care and making sure you inspect your plants every day or so. So with this mealybug it's probably kind of makes sense for why it's on my plant because my plant isn't actually that happy so I will bring this guy in I will treat this mealy bug well, not treat him I'll get rid of him but I'll treat the plant for the mealy bug and um, hopefully this guy will do okay I've had I've had my plants for a bit about over a year now one thing I'm learning about plants is I remember when I first got them I used to get super anxious about taking care of them I get so worried about them whenever I sit saw a pest I would have thought oh gosh that plants a goner because of that pest but as you I guess as you have plants for a little while longer you know that plants are actually very resilient and provided that you check quite regularly you get on top of pests I, I find that it's actually you know it's not too bad taking care of your plants you don't want such an enjoyable hobby such as plant care to cause you so much stress and anxiety so don't worry too much guys as long as you keep on top of your plant care on top of your inspections and then once you see pests you treat them you are diligent in treating them I'd say 90% of the time your plant should turn out quite well but yeah guys I'm going to I'm going to treat this mealy bug so guys this is the neem oil that I use what I'm going to do is I'm going to get dip a cotton wool bud into this and I'm going to press press up on that mealy bug right here now I might not be able to show you I actually do it because it's a bit tricky holding the camera and also and also um, treating or getting rid of the mealy bug. Um, because guys, one thing you have to 
remember is mealy bugs jump so you just want to make sure that you that he doesn't jump away so i'm going to put this camera down and i'm going to i'm going to try and see if i can get him so here i have my cotton wool bud what i'm going to do is i'm just going to dip it into the neem oil like so so i've got a little bit on the tip there and what i'm going to do guys is i'm going to really press this into that mealy bug there Alright guys, I think I got him. Probably just saw me inspecting him a little bit more intently because guys, once there's mealybugs, once there's one mealybug, there's often a whole bunch of other mealybugs. So you just want to make sure that you do inspect the plant to make sure you don't see any mealybugs. Now, I don't think I saw any other mealybugs. His soil is a little bit damp, which makes it a little bit tricky to, to see if there's other mealybugs in here. But it looks like any of the bigger mealybugs, I can't see any. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spray this plant with a mix of um, neem oil. So like a drop of neem oil, two pumps of liquid soap and in a standard spray. Uh, in a spray bottle and I'm going to spritz this plant because I'll be spraying this plant probably every day until I can be confident that the mealybugs have gone. Now this was a mix that I used yesterday because I was treating the mold on my begonia whitey so I'm just gonna it's still there's still some left so all I'm going to do is I'm just really going to spray this plant. I'm going to spray quite liberally. The important thing guys is to make sure you always remember to spray the underside of the leaves because sometimes when we just spray in the top there's actually some bugs hiding beneath so always make sure you spray the underside of the plant as well. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this guy dry and I'm probably going to bring him indoors overnight but it's just about 4 o'clock here so I'm just going to give him some bit more time to dry out. Guys, it is just such a nice day. It is a really nice day. Like, guys, just look at the sky. There's not a single cloud in the sky. You can see the moon. Like sometimes I mentioned, like for example, you can hear you can hear that dog barking and you could probably hear a um a mourn a, a mourn lower <laughs> a lawn a lawn mower but um i actually really enjoy suburbia suburbia is something i find a lot of comfort in it, it feels a lot like home just recently things have been pretty pretty intense on the news eh? Uh, particularly in other parts of the world and i just i guess just like appreciating how the sun sort of hits those leaves. It's uh, I'm pretty lucky to be living in Australia. I really do am thankful that I live in such a beautiful country and I just get to look at these, these beautiful trees and like looking at how the, sorry, you could probably see some of the, our washing there, but just looking at how the light hits our frangipani. guys as, as I sort of mentioned early in the week I was feeling a little bit down but um, I guess remembering to take some time out and just really appreciate the world around you I guess nature around you because you know I'm just sometimes it blows my mind that I'm just lucky to be able to enjoy this in my backyard and you know I'm gonna have dinner tonight and I know a lot of people in the world don't really get to do that you know even when things are unhappy it will pass and you just gotta optimism is something that I often find trouble 
feeling because I think I tend to be quite risk adverse but something I'm really learning to do is try to be optimistic even though it's just a mindset it really does make you feel better and I guess the more you practice it it's like a muscle the more you practice it the easier it'll come and I guess happiness breeds happiness I realize I probably went on a little bit of a tangent here definitely not really plant related but guys thank you so much for 14 days of daily upload there's still another two weeks to go uh, and I'm, I'm gonna be up for the challenge guys I really hope you had a good week this week let's hope this next week's gonna be even better I know it um, and thank you so much for watching guys but I will see you tomorrow